And we remember our team that we were always uh, doing like really from the heart and comes sending our stuff, we're having our tech arch, and then we're having beside Nick Thoracic our our co, which is like a high frog. I'm not asking about the um I'm not asking about the branches or anything today, so today we will start with the diaphrag. I know, I hope you all remember that the diaphragm is a musculotendinous organ portion that it is separating our thorax and an abdomen from each other. And as you see, it is a dome shaped, right? It is convex superior surface of the thoracic cavity and it has like concave inferior surface that face the abdomen cavity. Uh, and it's there, the main thing is that it has a chief muscles for the respiration, right? So without it and without it moving, we won't be able to breathe. And diaphragm curves uh, superiorly into the right uh, and left dome, right? As you see. Uh, and right dome is uh, higher than the left dome as we're having the liver and liver is located a bit higher so we can feel the liver, let's say. And during the inspiration, the right dome uh, reaches uh, around fifth rib and the left dome uh, ascends till the fifth intercostal spaces. So this is how it is moving. And here on this photo, you really well see uh, the um, vertebra colon, right? And how on the vertebra you see the domes, right? Uh, left and right dome. And uh, you see the, um, this is the muscular tendon or organ. So the muscular part of the diaphragm is situa uh, situated more peripheral location and the tendinous part it is more um, inside, right? And uh, I can say that it's like the central aponeuric uh, uh, part uh, and it is done by the central tendon. Uh, the, this is kind of characteristic for the, uh, uh, for the diaphragm as it has no um, Bone, right at all diaphragm so we're having the tendons and normally we're used to that tendons are attaching to the bones right but in this case as you see like the central tendon it is attaching one tendon to another rather than the uh, bones right uh, so uh, for me what's really important for this part like diaphragm we will also talk in the uh, body system floor it is the uh, opening right the oval opening uh, which is well seen there right which is uh, like this opening in the yeah. vowel opening. Uh, it is uh, for the uh, pathway of inferior vena cava uh, that right ahead perforate to the central tendon, and it is going inside the like inferior vena cava is going there, then going to the heart, right, right now. And it also has like the muscular part of the diaphragm. And in the muscular part, you see like several openings. We're having external parts, we're having postural parts, and lumbar part, right? So, uh, and also there are, are some other openings also, right? Uh, let's start with the external part. And the external part, it is like this part here, external part. Uh, and there is no opening, but there is just like the anterior medial gap that is located there. And uh, it is two muscular slips together attached on the posterior aspect of our typhoid process. And uh, there is no opening. However, we're having just like two parts of the diaphragm. They are on each other. And finite is giving us the anterior median gap, right? And it is attached to the typhoid process. Another open cost part that we're having is our costal part. And it is one muscular slip normally. It is attaching to the internal surfaces of inter inferior six muscle cartilages and joining the ribs on each side. The muscle part of the right and left domes are created by this one here. And normally it doesn't have any kind of uh, opening inside right here. It doesn't have any kind of opening. It is just creating the whole diaphragm as it is located. 
And the next one, it is our uh, lumbar part, and it is the medial and lateral arcuate ligaments that are creating it, and the three superior lumbar vertebras from the right and left uh, vascular pleura that ascend to the central tendon. Uh, and you see here the lumbar part. The lumbar parts, and here we're having the opening. Uh, one of them, it is like in the central tendon, as I mentioned, for the uh, inferior vena cava, another is in the thighs. Hello. There is a nice weather. Green grass, sunshine, birds singing, people are playing soccer. If you want to talk, you can always go there. Okay? But when I'm speaking, I kindly ask you not to talk synchronized to me. We see also the esophagus here, esophagus um, opening. We are calling that esophageal hiatus. And also, we are having anterior, uh, for example, this is continual ligaments, right, that are attaching our um, diaphragm. On the opposite side, we are having arcuate, uh, uh, lateral arcuate ligament, right? And, uh, and as you see, they are creating a tendon that it is attaching right ahead to the uh, vertebral column, and as, as these small um, ligaments are creating the aortic hiatus, which is really important for us, aortic hiatus. So uh, thus we can have like the uh, several openings. It is like the cobble opening. We're having the esophageal hiatus, aortic hiatus, and we're having several gaps. We're having the anterior medial gap, and on this side you see the two major gaps, right? So two major so muscle is attached there. So we mentioned the crew of the diaphragm, right? And they are musculotendinous bands, and they are arising from the anterior surface of the body, of the anterior, uh, through lumbar vertebras, and anterior longitudinal ligaments, and IVD. I think I already said The right cross, it is a larger and longer than the left cross, arise from the first three or four uh, lumbar vertebras. And left cross uh, arise from the first two or three lumbar vertebrae. Uh, as you see, the uh, right and left cross, they are united by the fibrous median arcuate uh, ligament. And in this uh, medial arcuate ligament, we are having like the uh, fascia covering the psoas major and spanning between the lumbar vertebral bodies uh, in the tip of the transverse uh, processes of L1 here. But I've mentioned it is located in the We're having also the like medial arcuate ligament and plus the uh, lateral arcuate ligament that covers the quadratus lumbarium muscles, continuing from the L12 transverse processes to the tip of the 12 rib vertebra. Right? Talking about the uh, superior aspect of the central tendon of the diaphragm, which is fused with the inferior uh, surface of the fibrous pericardium, and it is really fibrous tissue and it also encloses the uh, pericardium. Nothing important to see, right? Diaphragmatic hiatuses, we kind of already mentioned that uh, and let's talk about more into the details, right? And we are having AKA openings, hiatus means openings, and it permits the uh, structures of vessels, nerves, and lymphatic to pass between the thorax and the abdomen. And when we're having the caval opening, uh, it is the cent located in the central tendon, and there we're having inferior vena cava, which is uh, the passing there. It's located on the uh, right side of the medial plane at the junction of the central tendon right and medial ribs. Uh, and most superior uh, of the three large diaphragmatic apertures, the cava opening lies in the level of inferior vena cava, this between the T8 and T9 vertebra, and it is really adherent to the opening, uh, and uh, during the inspiration, uh, the uh, diaphragm it is moving, uh, and the cava opening it is having ability to dilate and constrict also. So this exact changes is facilitating the blood movement to the heart, to the large vein. Another opening that we mentioned it is the hiatus, which is on next to the vertebral side, right? It is the oval opening, 
and uh, right across of the diaphragm at the, the is located in the right place of the diaphragm at the level of the hip pan and it transmits the anterior and posterior vagal trunks, esophageal branches of the left gastric vessels and few of some other lymphatic right. And major uh, opening that we're having it is our aortic hiatus which passes descent passes the descending aorta. And the fact is that as you see the not piercing like all other hiatuses are piercing the um, diaphragm. However, this one doesn't pierce any of the diaphragm. Movement of the diaphragm does not affect any blood flow in the aorta, vice versa, causing the inferior vena cava right during the respiration. And the aortic hiatus also transmits the thoracic duct, and sometimes the azygos and hemiazygos wing. But you see how they are located. All um, so we see how our orta is passing here, right? And we see how this is the diaphragm and how the inferior vena cava descends, and we're having thoracic aorta di uh, passing through the uh, diaphragm, right? And abdominal aorta begins at the aortic hiatus of the uh, diaphragmatic level at the lower border of the T12, descends through the abdomen anterior to the vertebral bodies, and by the time it ends at the level of uh, vertebral 5, it is slightly to the left to the midline, and terminates uh, as a branch of the common iliac artery, about here, diaphragm, and it is starting at the level of the T12 and descends uh, it to the level of the L5. And here we are having, like, branching it to the two common iliac arteries that we're having. The abdominal aorta has its our anterior, lateral, and posterior patches, uh, branches that pass through the abdominal cavity. Um, So on this class, like we are not discussing straight ahead like abdominal um, blood supply or like in details like the trunks, uh, because it is body system force material like the abdominal supply. We will just talk about like now on the aorta, etc. The material it is more uh, smoother, let's say, rather than like material because I about branches and etc. So that's why on the quiz, like you don't need to study that this time for the quiz we will have just like whatever I'm explaining the lecture you will read exactly the same material from the book okay you don't need like the cellular trunk to read to get more information or anything like that so as I mentioned our abdominal aorta has a anterior lateral and posterior branches and they are passing through the dive right uh, so anterior branches of the aorta will be our cellular trunk superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric arteries. And here we see our uh, cellular trunk at level of our stomach. After that comes our superior mesenteric artery. And then comes our inferior mesenteric artery. So these are the branches that are on the, um, let's say, um, anterior surfaces, right? And they are supplying the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, the, um, the primitive parts can be divided into the foregut, midgut, and subgut regions. You discuss it in the embryology. And the boundaries of this region are directly related to the distribution of these three anterior branches of the abdominal aorta. For example, when we're talking about the foregut, and you remember that foregut was our abdominal static uh, from the abdominal esophagus, right? And ends in just like uh, inferior to the duodenal papilla. So thus we can say that our stomach, uh, esophagus, and duodenal, like major papilla, liver, pancreas, and gallbladder, they are supplied by the cellular trunk, right? So the first branch in the abdomen descending out of the abdomen, that is our cellular trunk, and exactly the cellular trunk it is supplying the foregut, right? And the foregut will be esophagus, stomach, duodenal, duodenal papilla, liver, pancreas, and gallbladder. Kind of easy to memorize that. On this photo, we can really well see like 
own supply what it is having. Another uh, area that it is our Midgat, uh, and Midgat is just inferior to the major uh, duodenal papilla. It descends to this whole duodenum and ends just in the, pro and it ends at the proximal two thirds of the distal one third constant colon. So you can say the constant colon it is fully involved there. So we include like duodenal, diaunum, uh, ileum, sacrum. So all the small intestines, and starting the large intestine like the sacrum, appending, ascending colon, trans and right two thirds of the constant colon. So meaning that, um, that's why it is painted here, like another part. So I, I just want to show you. or not to say that um yeah this is what I will so you can see like the, all these small enhancements are supplied by the As a part of the uh, stomach, and start of the gluten papilla, applied by the celiac. Starting from the duodenum, small intestine, up and sacrum, ascending colon, and the constant colon, like two thirds, is not supplied by the celiac part, right? It is supplied by the branch, which is our inferior mesentery branch, right? Inferior mesentery branch uh, is actually coming to this location here. The celiac trunk is here, all them are here. Inferior mesentery branch is supplied not on the size in which the photo, so you see the celiac part closer rather than the other part. Okay? And uh, other parts that we're having our, uh, in other parts of the, our transverse uh, colon, uh, also we are having like the uh, descending colon, and another one third of the transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, right, and upper part of the anal canal, they are supplied by the inferior so inferior mesentery artery, it is this one here. It supplies like the kind of the artery. So it's really easy to understand which part is supplied by what. Uh, so one more time, you see it from that photo here. We see like the for a gut is supplied by the celiac trunk, it got it is supplied by the inferior mesentery artery, and we're having kin gut, which is supplied by our inferior mesentery artery. Do you guys have any kind of questions regarding this? Then let's continue our talk with the uh, celiac trunk. And I will not go into much detail. Otherwise, we got it for four you. <laughs> so, celiac trunk, as you see this trunk, and this is how our aorta is divided, right? So, we're having celiac trunk, we're having inferior mesentery, and we're having the inferior mesentery arteries, right? And the um, uh, celiac trunk, it is the anterior branch of the abdominal. Like the forgot already, we know this. It arises from the abdominal aorta right ahead as the aorta hiatus, uh, aorta, uh, aorta is leaving the aorta hiatus uh, of the diaphragm and it is starting at the level of the L1. 
And it immediately is branching to the left gastric artery, splenic artery, and common hepatic artery. Right? So we see here the left gastric artery, we see the splenic artery, and logically the splenic artery will go behind the stomach and will supply the spleen. The hepatic artery logically is supplying the hepatic yeah, areas, and left gastric artery is logically supplying the stomach, right? And you were right. This is how the stomach and how everything is located. We see the part of the diaphragm, we see the esophageal part, we see the stomach, stomach area, cardia, fundus, body, pyloric antrum, antrum and pylorus, and then duodenum, right? Uh, short curvature of the stomach, uh, greater curvature of the stomach, we see the spleen, uh, right? So as you see, this is our splenic trunk, uh, yeah, celiac trunk. After the celiac trunk, we are having the, our left gastric artery, which is supplying the short curvature, right? And plus, the short gas, uh, left gastric artery is having a branch, which we are calling the esophageal branch, and it is supplying the uh, stomach part of the esophagus, right? Behind the stomach, we're having our splenic artery. Splenic artery, it is also divided into the uh, posterior gastric artery, which is supplying the posterior area of the stomach, and also it is giving us the short gastric arteries, which is supplying the upper part of the stomach fundus, right? And of course, like the splenic branches that are supplying the spleen. Uh, we mentioned also the uh, hepatic uh, artery, right? Uh, and as you see here, we're having like the common hepatic artery. Common hepatic artery further it is branched to the right and uh, to the uh, hepatic artery proper. It has right and left branches. It is also divided into the gastric duodenal artery, which is logically supplying the gastric part and duodenal part, right? Creating like a huge circulation uh, from creating the branch, which is like gastromental arteries, which is supplying the greater curvature. And from the splenic artery, we're also having a branch called 